hello hello good morning from italy this is an exciting video i don't think i've ever done a video like this before because i am solo traveling and it's only really i think my second time solo traveling in my life so the last time i solo traveled was in 2018 and i went on a city break to brussels in belgium i also went across to bruges and just explored the country a little bit and yeah i haven't solo traveled since then but if you watch my 30 before 30 video you might know that it was on my bucket list to travel solo again before I turn 30 and I am doing just that. So I am in Italy, I am in the north of Italy in the mountains in an area that's called the Dolomites. Specifically I have just spent four days in a region called Cortina di Ampezzo, D'Ampezzo, Cortina D'Ampezzo, sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, and then I was doing that with my friend Rui, she has gone home and I'm now solo traveling in a region called San Martino di Castrosa. Castrosa? I'm just gonna say San Martino. I'm just gonna say San Martino <laughs> because I don't, I'm not very good at pronouncing these Italian words, I'm not gonna lie. So yes, I've moved to a different region. This is definitely a lesser known region than Cortina. Cortina is super famous. This is well known, but definitely not as well known. And I can already feel that it's much quieter here than it was in the other areas. So it's actually kind of nice to feel like, I don't know, there's a little bit more peace in the mountains here and I'm really excited to explore. I only have two full days. I have today and I have tomorrow and then I travel home on Thursday. I arrived yesterday, settled in, did some work, had to catch up on some work from last week and got myself some organisational stuff done. I got my equipment for my Via Ferratas and stuff. I booked a Via Ferrata with a guide and I got myself a map of the local area, etc, etc. Went out for some dinner. It was a lovely start to the trip. And today I'm going to go and do a big big old hike and I had three options that I planned yesterday for my hike all dependent on the weather so if there's no cloud I'm going to do a Pal de San Martino hike if there's medium cloud I was going to do the Val Venegia lollipop hike and if there was low cloud I was going to do two smaller hikes like through some lower valleys so I had three different options based on the weather that I woke up to and look look what I woke up to this is the view for my hotel room. And as you can see, it's clear blue skies today. Look at those mountains up there. Not a cloud on top of them. So hopefully it stays like that and I can do the big, big, big hike. How incredible is the view from my room, by the way? But anyway, those blue skies mean that I could do the hike that I really wanna do. And that is the big one, the Pal de San Martino hike, which is a beast of a hike. It's up in the super high peaks, like behind me right now. You couldn't really see them on the video, but they're that direction they're crazy and because it's quite a rough and rugged and raw hike there's like cables to hold on to you can also clip onto them with things like this etc you only really want to do it on a clear blue sky day because then it is the most safe hike so yes looks like it's going to be a perfect safe day for me to do that fingers crossed it is the mountains the weather can change literally in minutes but i'm hopeful that if i get up there early i'm going to try and get the first cable car up then I should have the best chance of a nice blue sky, beautiful day in the mountains. And if you're worried about my safety while I'm solo traveling, don't worry guys, I have shared my location with Ant. It's all gonna be okay. Somebody's gonna know where I am because I know a lot of people have questions about things like that. I am being careful, Ant can track me and make sure he sees where I am in the mountains. Anyway, I'm gonna get some breakfast. It's really early and I don't think the hotel breakfast is open yet. So I actually picked up some bits from the supermarket and I popped them in my little fridge in this hotel. So I have a little yogurt pot. I have some raspies. These are local raspies, 100% Trentino, which is the region that I'm in. And then I also, because they don't have oat milk out here, I have not found a single place yet in six days, no, five days that has oat milk. So I got myself a monster because I need some caffeine. This is a big, it's a big hike today. So I'm treating myself to a monster. All right, guys. So I'm gonna eat my yogurt with my raspies. I'm also gonna put in the pot some nuts. I've got these nuts. These are the Choco Mix nuts. So I'm just gonna pop some of these in the pot with the raspberries to get some fats and some protein and some carbs and put it all in there with the raspberries and the yogurt, mix it up, drink my monster, fuel myself for this hike. That, that is the sound of happiness. Guys, monsters are just one of my favorite things in the world. Mm. 
All right, I'm ready to rumble. I've got my helmet and kit all strapped in. I've got my boots on, jacket on, gone for shorts, because I know I'm gonna get sweaty. And yeah, just finishing off this. Let's go catch a cable car. Wow, we look at the mountains this morning. I couldn't see any of these yesterday because there was cloud on them all and they look stunning. All right, I've stepped off the cable car and this is the view that I see. Let the hike begin. It's about 12K I found out, so let's do this. 10 minutes in and I'm coming into my first refugio. So this is a mountain hut. You can stay overnight here and you can also just pop in for food or to use the facilities. They have them scattered all over the Dolomites. Up in the high peaks, you can get some comfort, some hot drinks, a bed, a toilet, as and when you need. So I'm just gonna pop in, use their loo and continue. Holy guacamole, these views. Wow, guys, <laughs> this is incredible. I am in the peaks. So I came down a path down there. I'm now walking around the edge and then I think I'm gonna zigzag up there and then I have to attach the cables and go around that corner. That's what I think I'm doing. Let's see if that comes to fruition. So I've officially made it to the cabled section of the hike and I've put on my equipment. So the two pieces of equipment that I have, number one is this helmet, just to keep my head nice and safe. And number two is this harness. It has got two leg straps and then I also have two carabiners. And the general principle is when you're on the cables or you're on a via ferrata to always have at least one of these carabiners attached at a time. So only move one at a time as you move along the cables and along the via ferrata. So that is my equipment. And now let's go and tackle it. I'm gonna put this camera away and I'm gonna get my GoPro out because I'm definitely gonna to need to have all hands on deck to get through this section. I literally love this so much. <laughs> and look at those views behind me. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Nothing makes me happier than the mountains. And getting on this equipment just means that you can explore it in a whole new way. <sighs> I'm in my element right now. <laughs> so you can see the path which I've come along. Down there and then up and across the rocks, all the way up to here. I think there can't be too much longer left now. All right, all done with the cables. That was blooming awesome. I love that. And now I'm going to get all my kit off, continue the hike, and uh, yeah, I think that's probably gonna be one of my highlights today, just that whole experience. I love it, I absolutely love it. <sighs> Here it is, made it to the mountain hut and it has a pretty incredible view. Here is my mountain hut lunch. I've got pasta with mushrooms, a peppermint tea and an amazing view. And for dessert, I've got myself an apple strudel. They said it's fresh out of the oven and it literally smells divine. I've had a strudel a day on this trip and I have to say, this is the best one I've had so far. Mm. Check out the view from this refugio. I literally can't even cope with that. That is so <laughs> incredible. It's like some Lord of the Rings shit. It's just so dramatic and beautiful. Anyway, I have eaten my lunch. I'm back on the trail. I have done six and a half K and I've got about six and a half K to go. I've done the easiest <laughs> six and a half K. It's pretty much a lot of uphill. 
from now on. It's going to be a sweaty affair, but it's going to be a beautiful affair. So bring it on. Let's get cracking. I have a feeling that I am heading up that valley. So wish me luck. You know it's getting serious when you put in a pineapple bun. Pineapple bun getting sh done. That is the philosophy that I live by. Right, let's conquer this mountain. I've had two sets of people now stop me and tell me, oh, very hard. <laughs> Where you're going is very hard. Yeah, yeah, it is gonna be hard. But I'm ready for it, guys. Thank you for the warning. But I'm built for this. I'm in my element. <laughs> I love it. I love the challenge. Ooh. Look at those views. Look at those views. Incredible. Oh. Relentless uphill. That's it. I have reached the top. I've reached the highest point of my hike. And I'm not gonna lie. It really wasn't that hard, guys. I mean, it was non-stop relentless uphill for about three kilometers. And it was pretty steep most of the way. But once you just settle into a steady pace, it's all good. It is all good. So I've got about one hour until I finish this hike. And honestly, these views up here, look at these peaks. I don't know why I'm whispering, but I just feel like they deserve a whisper. How incredible. Blumenek, these views on the final section of the hike are getting better and better and better. So I was going to stop off in that refugio for a little cheeky drink before I got the cable car, but there's actually some pretty heavy dark grey cloud coming in. I know it looks nice behind me, but in front of me it's looking threatening. So I'm going to go and get a cable car sooner rather than later before the inevitable heavens opening situation. All right, I just got back to the room. That feeling of taking your boots off is one of the best feelings after a big day of hiking. It is 4 p.m. So I think I'm just going to have some like chill time, freshen up time. Weirdly, one of my armpits smells. <laughs> the other one smells fine. Smells fresh as a daisy. This one, no. So we're gonna have a little bit of like a body shower right now, freshen up, maybe post some stories on Instagram, just kick back, relax for a little bit of time and then I'll head out and get an early dinner. I went to a really, really great place last night that was so, so, so delicious and I would love to go back. So I'm gonna hopefully grab a table there. All right, this is my dinner situation tonight. I've got an aubergine tomato and mozzarella salad with some chips and then a herbal tea using wild herbs from the mountains and check out my view of the peaks, which are now fully in cloud. Good evening. I'm just chilling on my balcony. I asked the guy at reception to give me a glass of boiling water and I have some mint tea bags left over from my Airbnb in Cortina. So I'm just gonna make myself a mint tea and I'm gonna chill out tonight. I'm gonna journal, probably read my book, maybe FaceTime and just have a nice relaxed evening. Come a little bit closer. I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous about solo traveling because I haven't done it in so long and I thought, am I gonna like it? Because I have to admit, when I solo traveled in Belgium, I was like, mm, it's all right. But solo traveling in the mountains, that is my jam. I have just had the best time. Of course, I love sharing experiences with the people that I love and I love creating memories of people. Um, I wouldn't say that I prefer solo travel to traveling with other people, but I would say that I genuinely thoroughly enjoy it. I have just had the best time today traveling on my own terms, doing things that I love, things that bring me joy. And this is just a reminder to you guys that you don't have to wait for anybody else to enable you to go on an adventure. It doesn't have to be as big as going on a big hiking holiday on your own, but it could just be going on a little weekend day out, solo, doing something that you wanna do for yourself, as I said, on your own terms, not compromising for anybody else. That's the benefit of solo travel. You just do what you wanna do. You feel so free to do what you wanna do without thinking about anybody else. You can just be selfish, <laughs> which is really nice. 
so yeah let me know if you've had any solo travel experiences down below in the comments i would love to hear from you please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and yeah i have two more days here on my own in the mountains i'm very excited to experience them if you want to see what i go up to head over to my instagram i'll be documenting everything on there it'll all be in a dollar mites highlight so go check it out and i'll speak to you guys soon have a good day